Welcome everyone. It's time to talk about preparing for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's about to come. Like I said before he came, he was with us here on earth for three and a half years. And then he went back for 33 and a half years. Then he went back to be the, with the Father and prepare a place for us. Everything that he went to prepare is ready. The mansions are ready. Everything has been prepared, everything is in place, everything is set up, everything is ready. They are just waiting for the day of the Lord. We know that Jesus Christ will come back and take us with, that, with him so that we can go with him and be the partakers of the marriage supper. And then he will present us to the Father. As, the, as his harvest from the earth, as what he went to the earth to die for, he will present everyone, the ones that are in heaven already and the ones that will go with him on that day. So we've got to prepare for the coming of the world. Our Lord Jesus Christ is, a come, is about to come back. And things are happening that make me realize and see that the coming of the world is just by the corner. I don't want to go into it in, in, in detail at the moment, but just like I said in 2018 that I had a dream and the Lord showed me the Antichrist. Before then I had a series of dreams where the Antichrist was coming, but we didn't see them. But in 2018, we actually, I actually managed to see the Antichrist in the dream and the Antichrist walked past me, the soldier of the Antichrist. And now what I'm seeing, what I saw in the dream is becoming real and I, I cannot just believe it. Most of the times I'm asking myself, is this really what I saw in the dream? Is, is this really what is about to happen? Because it is about to happen. Things are being set up. But most of us, we don't know. Things are happening behind doors. But most of us Christians, we don't know. We are not prepared. We've got to prepare for the coming of world. Christians, we've got to wake up and know the time and moment we are living in. It's time for prayer, Christians. We are living at the end of the age and there's no time to waste. There's no time to think. There's no time to say maybe. Just like the Bible says that say, said about the Antichrist and the Antichrist is here. So we've got to prepare for the coming of the Lord because when the Antichrist is here, then what, what will happen next is the Lord will come. When the Antichrist goes to wake and does what he, he is supposed to do, then the, the Lord will come. The Antichrist is ready. They are preparing. They are putting everything in place. But Christians were not doing anything. Remember, Christians, we've got a greater God. So we've got to re play, pray. We've got to go on our knees and pray. After all, we know. After all, our Lord Jesus Christ told us beforehand. After all, he's still talking to us. He's telling us to prepare for his coming because he's about to come. But we're not preparing. We're not listening. The messages that are coming, we're not listening. What we're being told to do, we're not doing as Christians. But we are living at the end of the age. And our Lord Jesus Christ is about to come. Open your eyes and you see. Open your ears and you hear. And the coming of God is just by the corner. So we've got to prepare ourselves as Christians. We cannot just look and watch. We have to prepare ourselves. We've got to prepare our hearts. Just like I said, I started a series on the lessons that we have got to learn from David. David was a man that God loved. He is a man that God said, a man after my own heart. He is a man that God loved so much. So we've got a lot to learn from David as we prepare for the coming of God. The Bible says, David went to heaven, he's in heaven now with the Father. So we've got to learn from him whatever he did that was right before the Father. That caused him to go to heaven. If you want to go to heaven like David, so we've got to learn from David and do like David so that when we die we'll be able to go to heaven and be with the Father like David. I started the series on the lessons from David. I, I've looked at lessons like um, the, the heart, how we've got to prepare our hearts, the fear of God, the hell, because David knew that there is hell. And about was a humility. David was humble. So all those things that he knew and he was doing them before the Lord, that were right, and then he ended up going to heaven. So we'll go to learn from David and do what is right before the Lord, just like David, then we'll end up in heaven. We have got to prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord. And today I'm looking at heaven. David knew that day there is heaven. God showed him about heaven. God told him about heaven. Why? Because of the relationship that was between God and David. Why? Because of the fear of God that was in David. As a result, God was telling David things. God was showing David things. Things that some of us now we've never been told, we've never heard. But if we look at David, what he wrote down, we can learn a lot of things that were revealed to David, that were not revealed to any other person. Why? Because of the relationship that was between God and David. So we've got to learn from David. We've got to learn a lot from David. Rita, David knew about heaven. He knew that there's heaven. He knew that God is in heaven. But he knew more than that. More than just there's heaven. 
and just the, just God is in heaven. Because most of us, that's all we know. We know we only know that there is heaven, and we only know that God is in heaven. That's the end of story. But David knew more than that. So we've got to look at David. What he knew from God about heaven, what he learned, what God revealed to him about heaven, and then we can learn from David. The Bible says in Psalm seventy-eight, verses twenty-three. Yet he com he commanded. He, yet he commanded the clouds above, and opened the doors of heaven. So David knew that there there are, there are doors of heaven, but these doors of heaven are above the clouds. We are here on earth. Then above us there is there's, there's the sky and the clouds. And then above this sky and the clouds, that's where the doors of heaven are. And so David knew that God commanded the clouds. And the, they commanded the clouds above. And then he opened the doors above. So these doors to heaven, they are above the clouds. Which means the heaven is above. Because most of us who don't know where heaven is. And most of us who don't know where earth, hell is. We only know where earth is, where we are. But where hell is, we don't know. Where heaven is, we don't know. But David knew that heaven is above. There are doors to heaven. That you have got to go through if you want to go to heaven. There are doors, but these doors are above above the earth, above the clouds, above the, above the sky. This is where the doors to heaven are. This is where, just like I, I talked about the, the gates to heaven, but I didn't know where the gates to heaven are. I saw the gates. I saw the gate to heaven, and as it says, welcome to heaven, I've seen where it is, but I did not know. I was not shown where, where it is. I was not shown the way to get to it. Like you have got to go through the, the clouds, the skies, and you get to the, to, to the gate to heaven where it says, welcome to heaven. I just found myself standing there in front of it. They get to heaven where it says, Welcome to heaven. And now I'm, David knew that it is above the earth, it is above the clouds. This is where the doors to heaven are. And he told us above, about the heaven, the doors to heaven, that he commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. So they commanded, the clouds were commanded and they opened, the doors of heaven opened. This brings us to another, to something else that is in heaven. There are automatic doors in heaven. When you see automatic doors in here on earth, don't think they are just here on earth. They are in heaven. Those people who started to make automatic doors here on earth, it is an idea that they got from heaven. Some God told them to get them the idea to make automatic doors. Why? Because it is in heaven. And David knew about the doors, automatic doors in heaven, automatic doors of heaven, that they are just commanded and they just open on their own. They don't need an angel in, or anyone to open them. They just open automatically. So whenever you see automatic doors here on earth, don't think, oh, earth is so, people on earth are so clever. They've got automatic doors, doors that just open on their own. No, it is what is in heaven. In heaven, there are automatic doors. They just open on their own. Even the gates are automatic. They just open on their own. They don't need anyone to open them. The moment you, you, you get to it or you want to enter, the, the door or the gate will just open on its own. Automatically, and David knew about it. The Bible tells us also, in Psalm 33, verses 13, the Bible says, The Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. So David knew that God is in, a, is up in heaven above, but he looks from heaven above, and he looks down on the earth, and he sees all sons of men. So he sees each and every one of us. This is for those that, that think don't, God doesn't see. They think I'm on my own, I can do whatever I want, I'm in a room, the door is locked, I'm in a closet, the cupboard is closed, it's locked, no one can see me, uh, or I'm underground, the, there's no one, maybe it's in, it's in a mind, there's no one here, I'm just on my own, so I can do whatever I want, no one will see me, but no one thing, God will see you wherever you are. Whether you are in a box, you are in a closet, you are in a room, whether it's locked or not locked, whether there's somebody there with you or you are on your own, know that God is see, God can see you any minute, any time, any day, any moment, wherever you are, whether you think you are underground or you think you are upground, whether you think you are hidden or you think you are exposed, it doesn't matter wherever you are, God can see you wherever you are, you are never, you can never hide from God, no one can ever hide from God, wherever we are, or as many as we are, billions of us, each and every a minute God sees all of us anytime, any moment, any day. So don't ever think that you can hide from God because He can just look down and see you anytime. It is the, the same way He sees what you think 
or what you plan in your mind without even telling anyone. But God knows. It is the same way he sees each and every one of us. He doesn't need, we, we don't need to tell him where we are, we were or where we are or what we are doing. He sees us and he knows. Rabbi Akosa David knew about this. That God just looks down from heaven and he sees all of us, not, not, not some of us, not only those that are Christians and he doesn't see the Christians, or not, no, not, or only those that are Christians and he doesn't see that, those that are not Christians, no, each and every one of us, because we all belong to him, whether we are Christians or not, whether we follow him or not, whether we save him or not, it doesn't matter. He sees each and every one of us, wherever we are, at any time, at any moment, he can just see us. Just the Bible, just like the Bible says in, in Psalms 33, 13, that the Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. At, the, at any given moment, any given time, he can just look down and see each and every one of us. So don't ever think that you can hide from him. The moment you see that, you know that God is seeing you, sees you any minute, any time. The moment you know that God sees you and God is watching, it will cause you not to commit sin. If you wanted to steal and you think you are on your own, it's in the building or it's in the house, you are on your own, or it's in a room, you are on your own, so if you steal, no one will know. Know that God knows. Know that God is watching you. Know that God is seeing you. So you don't, say, you don't need to say, what will they say if they hear that I did this thing? If they hear that I, I lied or I cheated or or I committed adultery, or I did something that is not right, I committed a sin, what would they say when they hear? But remember that before they hear, those people that you are asking yourself what, you do, what they'll see, remember that while you are doing it, or before you do it, God is seeing you. While you are in the process of doing it, God is watching you. Because you can never watch, you can never hide from God. Anytime, any moment, any minute is watching you. If you are thinking of going to commit adultery, know that before you start committing that adultery, or before you even stand up to go, God is watching you. By the time you get there and you do whatever you do, you'll be just watching you. By the time you finish and you stand up and go back, you'll be just watching you. Because you cannot, you can never hide from Him. Every moment, every minute is watching you. He sees you wherever you are. So don't tell yourself lies that no one is seeing you, that no one knows. Don't don't think you can go at night when. No one is watching or don't think you can you can just drive your car privately and no one will know god is watching any day any minute any time david told us that he sees all sons of men he just looks down and he sees all of us anytime he wants to he is able to see us so we've got to know that god is watching because most of us, we get so worried about our, our family members, about our church members, about our friends. What would they say about our pastors? What, he, what will he say if they hear that I did this? What, we forget about God. What about God? What will he say when you're doing it? When you're in the process of doing it and he's watching you, what will he say? When you're in, on the way to go and do it and he knows you're going there to do it, what will he say? Before the people you're asking about or the people you're talking about know, he already knows. What will he say? He is the one that will see it first. He is the one that knows it first. What will he say? What does he say? Is he happy with you doing what you are doing? Thinking you are hiding. Thinking no one knows. And you are getting worried about your friends, your family, your church members. But you are not worried about him. But he is the one that sees you all the moment, all the time. Rabbi goes, we've got to do what is right before the world. The Bible also tells us in Psalms 19 verses 1, it says, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handwork. Rabbi Akosa. So David knew that the heavens declare the glory of God. If you go to heaven, there's nothing you see but the glory of the world. Or everything in heaven, everything about heaven is just about the glory of the world. Rabbi Akosa. There's nothing else that you can say except the glory of the world when you see what he has done what he has made what he, what he built in in heaven what he created in heaven yeah bros it is just the glory of the world so all heavens declare the glory of the world even they when they worship him the saints that are in heaven the angels that are in heaven they worship him they just declare his glory his holiness his glory nothing else but his glory so all heavens declare his glory the saints the angels they declare his glory what he has made in what he made in heaven is just declares his glory when you see everything in, in heaven you just see his glory Rabbi God says nothing else but the glory of God in heaven Heaven is about nothing but the glory of the world. Rabbi Akosa. 
They are bronze. The Bible also tells us in, in Psalms 18 verses 9, 9, it says, He bowed down the heavens also and came down with darkness under his feet. So David knew that God can, came, can come down. And when he comes down, he, 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 he prays his darkness down because he's light. Yeah, bros. So when he comes down, the, 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 the darkness is pressed down under his feet, and then he comes down, and then, because he's God, darkness cannot contend with him, darkness cannot fight with him. If Whenever he says he wants to go down, he can just, the, all the darkness will go under his feet, and he just comes down to the earth and he, to do whatever he wants. Nothing can stop him. No one can stop him. Why? Because he's the creator. Of heaven and earth. So anytime he wants to come down, he can just come down. The Bible goes on to say in Psalms 144.5, Bow down you heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. So David knew that when God wants to come down, he can just come down, and the darkness will be under his feet. As the, the word says in Psalms 18.9, verses 9. And then the Bible also goes on to Psalms 144.5 to say, When he comes down, the mountains will smoke. Rabbi Akosa, just like when he came down in, in, during the time of Moses, and he, he came down on Mount Sinai to meet with the children of Israel, and the mountains smoked. Why? Because God had come down. So God revealed all these things to, to David and David knew it. That when God wants to come down, he can just come down anytime he wants. But when he comes down, the darkness will be under his feet. And then he comes down. And then when he comes down, the moment he, 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 he is on the mountain, the moment he stands on, a, on any mountain that he will have chosen, smoke will be all over on that mountain. Why? Because of the presence of the Lord. Why? Because the Lord himself he will have come down. Rita, and then that mountain will be filled with smoke. N not only smoke, there will be thunderings and lightings. Just like it, that it happened during the time of Moses on Mount Sinai, when God had come down on Mount Sinai to meet with the children of, of Israel. They were smoking. They, the whole mountain, they were smoking on, in, in the whole mountain. They, 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 were, they were thunderings. And lightings. There were all sorts of noise in the skies. Why? Because God had come down on Mount Sinai to meet with the children of, of, of Israel. And David knew all this. This happened during the time of Moses. It happened many years before David was, was even born. But David, when he was born, when he was talking to God, God revealed all this to him. And God, David knew all about it. Why? Because of the relationship that was between David and God. Because God was able with the, with the way David was conducting himself before God. And God had to go to David and he was revealing him so many things to David. And then we have got to learn such things from David. If you want to go to heaven and be in heaven like him. So we've got to learn from him. We've got so many things to learn from David because God revealed so many things to him, so many things that we did not know. Or the only other person that knew, the only other people that knew about the mountain smoking were the children of Israel that were there at the time of Moses in Mount Sinai who saw them saw for themselves the mountains smoking and they saw the, they heard the thunderings and they saw the lightnings and they saw everything. They, they saw it for themselves because they were there. But David was not there. But God showed him all this. Why? Because of the relationship that was there between David and God. So we've got to learn from David. We've got so many things to learn from David so that we maintain our, a good relationship with God. Just like David had a good relationship with God, a relationship that caused God to reveal so many things to David. And at the end, when his time was over here on earth, David went to heaven to be with the Father where he is now, still dancing in heaven. Why? Because God was happy with the way God, David lived his life here on earth. The Bible tells us in Psalms 104, verses 12, it says, By them the birds of the heavens have their name, they have their home. They sing among the branches. So because of the relationship that was between David and God, God revealed to David that there are birds in heaven. Most of us, all we know is there is heaven, and the throne of God is in heaven, and that's it. 
and we know that there are mansions for us in heaven and that's it we don't even know that there are birds but david knew that there are birds which means there are animals in heaven not only birds there are so many other things in heaven there are beaches there are rivers flowing with water there are so many things in heaven but so many people did not we did not know because we, it was never revealed to us but david knew that there are birds in heaven and they've got their homes in heaven God showed David all these things that he knew. Rita, that besides the, the, the saints that are in heaven, besides their mansions, the, the, besides the throne of God in heaven, there are birds, there are, there are some animals that are there. There are so many things that are there in heaven. So it's not just what we thought. Yeah, bros. There are so many things in heaven that we cannot even ex start to, uh, to explain about them or talk about them and finish them because there are so many. Rita, because God has created so many things in heaven, you can, ne you can never imagine. It, the bigness, it is very big and there is everything. Just anything you imagine is there in heaven. Rabbi Rita, even movies in heaven, people watch movies in heaven, acted by the angels. You tell, tell, talk about it, even cars, there are cars, they've got their own types of cars in heaven that they drive. If you want to go to, from your house, your mansion, to the beach, you just jump onto the car and you go. You don't need to learn driving the car, it's automatic. You don't need, you don't need anyone to teach you how to drive it. The moment you see it, you just know, you don't even anyone to say, this is a car. The moment you see it, you just know this is a car and you jump on it and you go wherever you want to go and you get there, you you move off, you don't even need to buy it. You don't even need to own it. It's just so everyone, anyone that wants to use it, they just jump on it, use it, and they go and go do whatever they want. There is good life in heaven. There is freedom in heaven. There is happiness in heaven. There is good things in heaven. All we need to do is to strive, to do all what we can do, to be able to go to heaven, to do all what we can do to escape hell. Harabaya Kosa. The Bible also tells us in, in Psalm 78, Verses 26, it says, He caused an east wind to blow in the heavens, and by his power he brought in the south wind. So most David knew that besides the birds, besides the mansions, besides the throne of God in heaven, there is wind also blowing. The, besides wind, there are flowers. There are so many things in heaven, including the wind, the east wind, the south wind, like the Bible is saying in Psalms 78, 26. Yeah, bro. But it's not only the, the wind in heaven. There are so many other things. If, if you look at the Bible, at the Red Sea, when the children of Israel had come to the Red Sea and Pharaoh was pursuing them, the, God used the east wind to blow over the sea for the sea to dry up. And now Moses, David was also talking about the east wind in heaven. This is where you see that everything in, on earth is also in heaven. There is an east wind in heaven that David talked about in Psalm 78 verses 26. And there is also an east wind that blew on the Red Sea during the time of Moses when they, when they were at the Red Sea and Pharaoh was pursuing them. The east wind blew on the, si on the sea for the sea to dry up. And it is the same east wind that David was talking about in heaven. That God, I'll read it again, Psalm 78 verse 26. He caused an east wind to blow in the heavens. And by his power, he brought in the south wind. So there's an east wind in heaven. There's a south wind in heaven. There are winds blowing in heaven, just like there are winds blowing here on earth. So when we see winds blowing, we know that it's not just here on earth, that there are, there are winds blowing, even in heaven. So many things that are here on earth, they are also in heaven. Just like flowers, like I said, rivers with water, everything. As it is here on earth, it is in heaven. But it did not start here on earth, it started in heaven. Everything in heaven is duplicated here on earth. But in, in heaven it is better than what it is here on earth. Why? Because what is here on earth is temporary. The, one, the, the ones in heaven are permanent. So the ones in heaven are, are permanent they are, and they are very good quality and they are far much better than what is here on earth. Rita, if the flowers, you name it, the rivers, the water, everything in heaven is there. But in heaven it's far much better. It's good quality. It's better quality than what we have here on earth. It's just for us to know that so many things that we, we did not know that are in heaven, they are there. 
And what David knew that things like that are there in heaven. Things like the east wind. Things like the south wind. Things like birds in heaven, with their homes in heaven. So many things in heaven that we did not know that they are there. But David knew why? Because of the relationship. Rita, that was between David and God. God had to show David so many things. Rita, we've got to do the same thing. We've got to learn from David. So that we live lives that are pleasing before God. So that God will show us things to come or things that, that, are, that are about to happen. Or he can show, show us things in heaven. Or he can just reveal things to us just the, in the same way he was showing David the things in heaven. The things to, have, to come. The things that will happen. So many things he showed David and so many things he told David. Even when he, David was about to come, God told him. Even when David was about to die, God told him about his son that would build a house of a, a, a house for God and all, everything that he, his descendants would do, that he would keep a man on, on the throne of Israel simply because of David, that he was not going to take away kingdom, king, kingdom from David, just like what he had done to Saul, but because, of, because God was happy with the way David had conducted himself before God, God said he was not going to take it away from David, he would always make sure that David had a king before him. Rabbi Akosa, it did not end there. When David died, he went to heaven straight. God took him to heaven. Why? Because God was happy with what God, David was doing here on earth. So we've got to do the same things. We've got to do what cause God to be happy with us. Then he will reveal things to us. He will show us things. And then when we die, we'll be able to go to heaven and be with him. Just like David is in heaven, is in heaven with the Father. That should be our target. To go to heaven and be with the Father. And be partakers of marriage supper. When our Lord Jesus Christ comes. And to be able to go to heaven. 